Okay, guys, so uh, check this out. This this is you're gonna like this, I think. So I've got my player on our like test uh, scene, and our player. I'm actually in the player. I'm logged in as a player, right? So normally I can't do very much as a player, but here I'm gonna open up this thing uh, called Magic Spawns, and I have access to all this stuff. You guys may have seen some of these things in the past. And in my list, I have our brave little boat. And I dragged it onto the scene. And as a player, notice it comes with a crew and everything. As a player, I'm going to actually be able to manipulate this vehicle. And that's not something you're supposed to be able to do as a player, right? You're not supposed to be able to move stuff around. So uh, what's happening here? And by the way, this vehicle, I can get on it. And once I'm on it, I can move and everything moves with it. I move, everything does, right? Maybe I want to disembark here on this shore. And then I'm going to have the ship take off with the rest of the crew, and they're going to go wait for me uh, as I do some deed, right? So what's happening here? Um, there's a lot of new stuff, stuff that you've seen before, specifically a vehicle in, in operating. So this tutorial is going to be about showing you how to make vehicles now. In 2025, we have new ways of doing things, ways that are really bulletproof. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that and then how to do some of this cool sharing stuff that I did where my players can actually manipulate this. Imagine if I gave my players a city that they could build or, you know, they've got a campsite and they can drop a campsite and move things around as much as they want. That hasn't been possible until right now, until this week. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. It's all using free tools and hopefully enjoy it. So let's jump into the tutorial. So really quick, if you don't know BaileyWiki and my channel, uh, we create tutorials and assets and other things to help really everyday GMs, non-technical GMs, um, build really great experiences for themselves and for their players. If you're looking for technology or artwork, tips and advice, mapping advice, VTT advice. We primarily use Foundry VTT. We use Dungeon Draft as a mapping tool. We use other tools as well. But if that's what you're interested in, this is a great channel for you. Uh, we'd love for you guys to stick around. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe. There's some really cool stuff coming out next month and over the next few weeks uh, that you'll get an alert on. And of course, most of the assets, like 99% of the assets that you see in our, like everything you see here, for example, in our tutorials, these are all available through the BaileyWiki Patreon. It's linked in the video description. And come check us out. You can subscribe for a month and literally get everything we've ever produced and then decide when you want to come back. So it's super easy. So with that, let's jump into the tutorial. So in terms of the three modules we need today, the main one we need is BaileyWiki Mass Edit. This does like three major things for us for vehicles. The first is it gives us a linker function that replaces kind of token attachment. It lets us actually make prefabs. It lets us combine things together that we're going to need to combine entities like tiles and sounds and stuff in order to make the, the ship itself, the vehicle. The second thing it does is it injects a, a linking action into region so it's a custom action for regions that makes it so tokens can just automatically stick to that region and they can move around in the vehicle and then the third thing it does is it gives us the ability to have bags and bags are where we can have collections of things that either we want to use as gms or we want to give to our players to let them use now the the if you want players to actually move things around once they drop them on the scene if you want to have them actually control the boat or the wagon or whatever the vehicle is the second thing you need is move that for you. Now, this is also a module by Adif, who is also the developer of BaileyWiki Mass Edit. So they work really well together. And move that for you lets you give your players the ability to move stuff around um, that normally they can't, right? So these are going to be things like uh, tiles, right? So with those two things, that's what we really need. The last thing I'll show you is Media Optimizer. I believe this is a premium. The first two are free. I believe this is premium. It's by Ripper. It's super handy because it will automatically optimize any of your assets uh, for Foundry. So if it's like, if you have a big PNG, it'll it'll um, make it like a 10th of the size and turn it into a, web, a WebP. If you've got MP3s, it'll turn it into to dot .ogg files. So it does a lot. Um, you don't need it, but it's just a tip if you guys are building stuff. Uh, what you don't need are like the old vehicles module. I've done lots of tutorials over the years on how to make vehicles. We used to use a module called vehicles. You don't need that anymore. We used to use token attachment. We don't need that anymore. We used to use things, things like mount up. Um, I don't need, we don't need any of those to make the vehicles we're going to show you guys today. So you're welcome though in the comments to let me know if you've had some good mileage from any of those, let other users know about it. Okay. So 
Now we need to actually make our prefab. Before we do that, we need the tiles. Just to spend a second on this, a lot of you are asking, like, how do you get tiles, right? So this is just a tile, right? It's just a WebP tile. Well, you can get tiles in a lot of different ways. I made this using BaileyWiki assets in Dungeon Draft. And then Dungeon Draft has a nice little way of exporting things with transparency around it. That's super easy. Uh, you can also use Clip Studio or GIMP or, or Photoshop to remove the you know, the outside area around your tile, right? That can be a little bit more difficult and time consuming. A really easy one, although it's a paid service, it's not too expensive, is remove.bg. It's a background remover tool, it uses AI to remove the background. It's super accurate, I highly recommend it, remove.bg. Um, it'll even remove, like if, if you have your image originally with a ocean behind it, it'll remove the ocean and just pull the boat out. Uh, you don't need to have like green screen background or anything like that. Super awesome. Okay, so we've got our tile. Then we might add a drawing, right? So this is a little um, levels drawing. This is just a stair that pops the user up 10 feet onto the crow's nest. Um, we all, You can also add a light, right? So we've got a little light here and we've got an audio sound. This is an audio sound that just plays really subtly some you know, waves uh, lapping up against the side of the boat. And then we've got what seems invisible here. It's actually a region. So this is a, a special region that's got that linker function. And then I've got some sails, right? So these sails are just overhead tiles. They're just set up to be 10 feet up. They fade, they've got occlusion IDs, so they both occlude each other and they block light, real simple, okay? So those are our pieces. Now we're gonna assemble our boat. Let's start by bringing our sails over. And we'll put them right about there. That looks good. Uh, let's do it a little bit further up. Let's do it right over our, our mast. That makes more sense. Oh, by the way, they do have a token magic effects filter applied to. It's just a shadow. All right. Okay, so that's good. Let's drag everything else together. Uh, we're going to put this right on the square so our players can hit it and then pop up like they're stepping on a ladder, maybe. Uh, let's put our light uh, maybe just underneath. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, let's give our audio beacon kind of a center location here. So it's pretty uniform. And then we will drag our region over here. Now I'm going to show you really quick how I made this region. So if you go to regions, you can see I've already made one called vehicle region. Let's make a new one of the exact same thing. We'll call this uh, something in a second. But what the main thing you need to do is just give it a behavior. It's real simple. And what mass edit will do is it'll inject link token as a behavior, right? So we're going to add that. And all that does is that makes sure that when tokens step onto that region, they stick to it and then you can move them off and they, they unstick, right? Uh, and we'll call this um, vehicle region two, since we already have one. And that's essentially how you make a region. And then you just come into your polygon tool or whatever tool. So you select the region, you draw it and as long as it's in orange, it'll draw that region. Uh, and then mass edit will let you actually move regions around too. So that's another reason you need mass edit for this kind of work. Okay, so we've got our other region. If you're wondering about this icon, I use uh, some other modules to enhance how regions work. You guys don't need to worry about it for this video. I do cover it in some other videos too. Okay, so now we need to actually turn this into a prefab. They're just sitting together. Now we need to connect them. So a little tip here. Another thing that Mass Edit does is introduces Pixel Perfect Hover. If you click that on, then it'll it'll only select what you are hovering over because when you're dealing with layers of tiles, it can get messy. Pixel Perfect lets you zero in on the one that you want. So I'm just going to select this one and I'm going to press L for link. And that's going to give me this linker menu. I can either link things manually or I can do this handy little tool, which just lassos everything together and it goes through all the layers and attaches anything uh, within the region of that tool. So now I'm gonna test something. I'm gonna hit Shift Q. And what Shift Q does is it just shows you all the linked entities on a scene. In this case, we just have the one. And they're all connected by this like virtual link object. And I can see my lights and my sounds and everything else. I'm gonna make this so my light doesn't move stuff around. It only receives information about movement. It doesn't make other things move with it. You don't need to care about that. But that just shows me that this is working. So let's test it out. Let's grab our boat, move it around. Perfect. You can rotate it with the mouse wheel. This is working great. 
okay, now maybe I want to have a crew that comes with this boat. So I'm going to grab all my tokens. And it's very important, they're starting outside of that region that I created. Because when you move them in, I believe this is how it works, as they move into the region, that's what causes the region to then create the association, the link. Watch, I'll hit Shift Q again. And you can see now all of my tokens are now attached to this boat. Okay, so let's try that. Let's test this out. Let's move our boat. All of our tokens move with it. Perfect. It's exactly what we want. Okay, now we've got our prefab made. Now, how do we use it? Like, where do we put it where we could like deploy it when we need to? So now we're going to click open the mass edit preset browser. That's what this is. And we're going to drag our boat. By the way, the, the image, whatever image you grab and drag over, that'll become the default image to the thing. So you want to grab an image that will help you know that this is a boat. I'm going to grab the boat part of it, drag it over. Do I want to include the 11 attachments? Yes, that's also confirmation I did it right. And let's call this uh, our brave little boat. Click apply. Okay, here we have our boat. So now we have it as a preset. Now, as a GM, we can double click it and we can deploy our boat anytime we want, right? I'm in preview mode and I can move it around and I can even resize it. I can even do things like mirroring it horizontally or vertically. Super, super awesome. Uh, I can even do things like adding it to a brush. Maybe I want to deploy multiple boats. I have a whole fleet, right? Super easy to do. All right, we'll delete our boats now. But what we really want to do is we want to get it to our players. So that's where bags come in. So let's go over to our bags. You can see I have a bunch of new bags here. To create a new one, you just click this icon, creates a new bag, get the idea. I've created a bag already called Magic Spawns. Let's open this bag up. Well, first of all, I'll show you there's an edit menu where you can change its name. You can give it a different artwork. There's tons of uh, stuff available in the Core Foundry to give it new artwork. You can even tag it. Uh, in this case, I want to open the bag. And then I get this. Now, this bag I already configured and I put some stuff into it. From a configuration perspective, I don't have it automatically searching anything. I'm just manually putting stuff in here. I want to control what my players have access to. Um, the appearance, I just gave it some colors. And then this is key under miscellaneous. And by the way, if you guys notice, you can actually search bags now. You can give it a little search bar in case you have a bag full of stuff, like maybe all the tokens you own from Tom Cartos and Bailey Wiki and everybody else. You can make a bag that's just your tokens and they're just searchable, super easy to use. You can add them to brushes. It's super, super nice. But what I care about is these, right? And so these were are off by default. But if I toggle them on, this is going to let uh, my players both move and rotate spawned tiles and tokens that I give them access to. Okay, it's just going to automatically give them permission to be able to move that stuff around. Normally players can't do that. All right, so let's save that. And the last thing I need to do with my bag is I need to make it accessible via a macro. So I'm going to click this and it asks if I want to create a macro for the bag. Yes, I do. I'm going to just give it that name, save my macro, and then I'm going to go into my macros folder, which is hiding down here in the corner if you don't know that. And I'm going to look up that bag. I'm going to right click it and configure ownership. In this case, I want all players to be owners. Okay. I could also instead make just my test player. I only have one player in this world, but I could just make my test player the owner. Maybe he's the mage, right? So in this case, I'll give all players ownership, save my settings. And now that bag is ready for players to use. Of course, we need to add our boat to it, right? So let's look up our brave little boat. Just drag it into the window, and now we've got a boat. So what else is in here? Well, I want my players to drop an instant fortress, right? It's a two-story fortress. They can drop it on any map as long as they have the spell. Uh, they can teleport with this teleporter. Here's a doorway to a magic mansion, and I've even got a phantom steed, right? That's actually a vehicle as well. I'll just actually show you this right now. So I can drag this out. And you can see I've got this phantom steed, pretty cool. And if I go to my region layer, you can see I have a region and that region is for a vehicle mount. So this works as a vehicle mount. If a player just walks onto the steed, they can mount to it and then they can move the steed around. Oh, if you have animated tiles, the pixel perfect doesn't work. I don't know if that's a bug that we can fix, but if you turn it off, you can move your animated tiles around. And just to show you, let's put our Let's put the big guy on the mount, and there he can move around on top of it. Cool, right?
Okay, so let's go and test this with our players. Okay, now we're in our test scene and we've got our test player here. We're gonna open up our macros and we can see we have their macro here. We'll drop it into their macro bar. And now as the player, I can click this open and I can see all the stuff I have access to. So let's double click our boat and we'll drop it onto the scene. That works great. Let's get on our boat with our players. And now let's move it around, right? So I can grab any part of the boat and move it, except for the players, of course. Those will, those will just unstick them from the boat. I can rotate it, right? I'm holding down Control and Mouse Wheel. And let's say I want some of my party members to disembark over here. Uh, they can do that. I can't control those party members unless I've been given access to, right? So my party members can disembark. We'll have our GM go ahead and do that part. And the rest of us will continue on to maybe further down the beach or, you know, maybe we'll post up here and wait for new orders. But that's it. Pretty cool, right? So I mentioned other things you can do. You can drop that instant fortress here and it's fully levels enabled so your players can run around and sight it. There's actually a couple stories. There's a whole interior to it, right? And uh, they can uh, drop their phantom steed, which I showed you. And you can do cool stuff like this. Like this is just one of my scrolling maps, right? So I can uh, just drop a boat right in the middle and my players are now, you know, fighting their way down a river and I can drop in multiple rowboats that maybe I've created ahead of time. And it works just really, really great. Okay, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was a lot of fun to make. I'm, I'm really glad that uh, Mass Edit is supporting vehicles in such a great way now. Uh, let us know in the comments if you guys have other questions, if you're wondering how I did some other things in here, um, how any of this stuff works. And in the meantime, have fun making your maps.